Hello everyone, this, my name is Jeff Fosna. I'm the superintendent from Elmdale School and I'm also a member of the ESSA Planning Committee. Um, the committee met earlier this week and talked uh, kind of moving along with the ESSA planning. And one of the things we talked about is sh sharing out our progress with our stakeholders and other educators around the state. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I thought maybe by putting uh, these two um, YouTube videos together, it's a way for administrators and teachers to share what we're doing and then also provide you an opportunity to ask questions. Maybe what I say here today, you'll say, no, don't do that. And you can get a hold of one of the members of the ESSA planning committee and share your thoughts. So uh, again, this is part two. So if you missed part one, part one was kind of in totality what the planning committee is at, what we're doing, kind of the timeline, uh, where we're going. And this one is really focused on the accountability subcommittee, which I provided this report to them earlier this week. So let me share you some thoughts about accountability. Kind of the old system was the test, you know, under No Child Left Behind. So we're we're building the new accountability system. So accountability indicators are what we're, the values we're going to be looking at that determine uh, school success or not. And uh, I'm going to glean over uh, this slide here, but we're talking about what we think are the required indicators that you're going to have to be reporting to uh, the state uh, for the accountability system under ESSA is still the state test. We're still going to have smarter balance or some state assessment in the same grades we had before. But what will be different will be uh, the inclusion of a growth um, calculation of some kind. Uh, we Educators, we've been asking for this for years with No Child, uh, that we wanted to be able to give some credit for growth besides sorry, only 98% of your kids were proficient and hence you failed. Um, by show, Even if you're a low achieving school and you're making huge growth, there was no mechanism to say well done within No Child. So we're trying to build that into ESSA. High school grad rate, it will still be an indicator. Uh, achievement on the access test for EL kids is a new indicator, but would be part of ESSA. And then a school quality factors. School quality factors were not part of No Child Left Behind, and we believe are great indicators of students or school success um, in addition to the test. And, and again, we as educators complain the test on one day at one time is not a good indicator of how well our schools are doing. We believe things like school climate and student engagement, uh, if we can find a mechanism to collect that data for every kid and every subgroup and every grade in the state, <coughs> uh, excuse me again are better indicators of success of your school. So be looking for uh, something dealing with school quality factors in the formula. Um, it could be surveys. We're really not sure what it's going to look like, but it's something we're really focused on trying to, to get built into the new ESSA equation. <clears throat> Uh, achievement has to make up the largest percentage of any uh, equation to determine uh, for accountability. So if it's a pie chart, 50% of it has to be on student achievement, which is the test and growth. So uh, we really want to make sure growth is a uh, factor in our equation because it offsets just the raw uh, proficiency on the exam. So you know, growth is important. The problem we're having is determining a, a way to determine growth in the high school where we're only testing with the state test in the 11th grade and determine growth. We kind of need a back to back testing window and what we're going to do there. What we've looked at is thus far and we've looked at several equations is something like this, a student learning index where we can compare and rank year one, like all the third graders and all the third grade classrooms in math and all the little elementary schools across the state and then rank the schools. So then the school with the best proficiency scores in math is school A uh, on year one. They, the kids just aced it, didn't miss a single thing. They're just awesome, okay? And then you have school H and I, which that's where the lowest performing uh, third graders were. But then we're gonna apply a different calculation to each school based on where they uh, scored year one. So in year two, for the growth factor, we would heavily weight a school that was doing really well in the test. 75% of the SLI calculation is based on achievement and 25% on growth, because we all know once your kids are doing very, very well, it's hard to get growth. It's hard to meet the growth uh, targets. And then comparatively, if you're at the bottom, 
we would weight an SLI calculation 25% achievement because your kids aren't achieving as well, uh, but give you a ton of credit for growth if you can meet or exceed the growth, uh, the growth uh, goals between year one and year two. So as you can see here, we're applying a numeral or a number to kids that are meeting, exceeding, or approaching, or don't meeting the expectation. This is going to be in the achievement on year two and the growth on year two. So if I, I give you a, a, a kind of a fake school, test school, that's a good achieving school, good growth school, we're going to take 93 kids, and on year two, we're just going to say, did they exceed, meet, approach, or didn't meet their proficiency target, and the same thing for their growth targets, and we're going to put them into these categories. Oops. Then we're going to take that and apply the math to it. So for every kid who exceeded the, the proficiency mark, we're going to give them 1.5 points, and, and again, we're deriving out a number, meeting the growth or the proficiency target, approaching it, didn't meet the proficiency target, and you come up with a, a number for achievement. And then you do the same thing with growth. Hey, maybe that kid didn't do well in the proficiency mark, but hey, they rocked it. They were way, their growth was way over what they expected. They're going to earn you 1.5 points times the number of kids to Again, we do that for all four categories. Then because this is a top quartile school, we apply that 75% to achievement, 25% to growth, and we divide that number by 93, number of kids in the class, and we come up with a percentage, an SLI index. Oh, sorry. Then we're going to take that SLI index, and you can see how we can compare schools. So if you have a low achieving school B, a low achieving good growth school, you take those same 93 kids, the vast majority of them are not meeting the proficiency mark, but they're meeting or exceeding the growth targets, notice their score, very good. Where if you have a low achieving school with a low growth, low achieving, low growth, here's their SLI index. It's pretty obvious that both these are low achieving schools, but this one's getting the work done and this one's got work to do. Um, again, it's uh, we're kind of just playing with an SLI calculation, but we want to build into the formula for accountability for ESSA something that gives you credit for growth, uh, not just flat proficiency. Uh, the bad news, again, is what we're going to do in the high school, and that's still something we're working on, how to, how to get a growth factor into the high school uh, environment. We talked about N size, you know, what's the statistical size of a group before we report them, and No Child Left Behind, that was 10. We're going to keep 10 uh, for ESSA. <clears throat> and then we talk about redefining ready. Redefining ready is a, a, a different indicator that we believe we can apply to high schools to show the good work that they're doing. Again, aside from just graduation rate and the test, uh, as a way of indicating that kids are ready to go to college or to work. So let me get out of this and I'm gonna show you the Redefining Ready website. Shameless plug. Um, this is supported by the National Association of School Administrators and uh, Again, is a different way. We believe we think we believe we really can collect this data. Uh, I I think we could collect it through PowerSchool for every graduating senior, and and be able to tell parents that 100% of our high school seniors are leaving our high schools ready for college or ready for a career. But uh, redefining ready is promoting that if a kid would leave high school to be college ready, they should. Um, meet one of these indicators like you could have a GPA a 2 point at a 4 and one of the following and then you pick one of the following and not every kid's going to have the same pathway um, which I like I think every kid has a different pathway how are they getting to deter how are they determining to to us as educators they're college ready and I don't think it's just flatly the ACT so if they get a 2.9 or 2.8 in their high school coursework and they take a dual credit class in English or math and an ABC College ready, you know, uh, you might do well on the ACT by itself, college ready. Um, and then some additional factors could be added. I really think we could collect this data for all of our seniors to determine if they're college ready. And career ready, <clears throat> this is something that we've worked a lot. Uh, Wayne Kutzer and the accountability team has worked at changing these. I, I Please, these probably won't be it because we're already altering them. But again, the, the concept is the same. Is to be career ready, you would pick two or three different indicators to show that you're career ready. Like 
we already say 90% attendance isn't good enough, but let's say it's 96% attendance. If you're nine, if you're uh, in school 96% of the time, your junior senior year, you've met the indicator. Check, and maybe you got to do a workplace learning experience, or you got to have a um, you know some of the uh, work keys test or, or something of that nature. We just believe by putting several options down and letting schools and, and uh, indicate each kid that maybe has, again, a different pathway, but they're showing the indicators that they're career ready, that's a good thing. And if we can put that into the accountability system, that again is a good thing and should be reflected and reported to our patrons and our parents and those people of the good work we're doing. So, um, you know, that's part two. I guess uh, if you have questions, I encourage you to jump on the uh, DPI website uh, and the ESSA page, and I believe there's a link uh, contact list on there. You can contact any of the ESSA planning committee members and share your thoughts on this. I hope this helps. Uh, it is definitely a work in progress. If you remember from the uh, part one, we have months to go yet before we get close, and this is a living, breathing document. We've been uh, highly encouraged by that by the department. I truly believe that, that this is something we will be changing in year two, year three, year four as as it uh, as it grows and develops. And the nice thing is this time, it's our plan. It's not somebody else's. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, have a great day.